Chris here from Friendly Frenzy Games, and today we're back with another full puzzle solve for an extras escape room and escape simulator. This one's called Cats in Time. If this video helps you, subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games for more escape simulator guides. So you can see this escape room takes place in a garage looking type area. There's a few lock and combination um, puzzles, but this one's primarily logic driven. You can see we have a combination here. We can just go ahead and expose our lock here. With You can see this one also has a little bit of a plant logo on it, so we'll use that later. There's another one in the corner here. We'll just flip this switch and this will expose our combination as well. This one looks like to be a little bit of a light bulb. Um, the easiest place to start in this room that I've found from doing it um, is probably in the just cabinet here. So grabbing this magic book of numbers, we're going to use that as a clue, but to start we kind of want to look around the room. What you're going to do is look at this thermometer here above the sink and you'll notice that there's Fibonacci home systems. Within this clue, they're going to talk about the Fibonacci sequence as well as the Lucas sequence. Obviously with it being Fibonacci systems on this um, thermometer here, we want to use the Fibonacci sequence for the first part of this puzzle here. So it just goes to show um, in this an example of how it works. So with this, it's saying that the um, each number is the sum of the two preceding ones. We know we're looking for A and we're looking to solve for B also. So a little bit of um, kind of high school math here. Maybe it's even earlier, don't really remember, it's been a little while, but for A, what we want to do is add the 3 and the 5. So that's going to give us 8 for A, and then to get us B, we want to add the 13 and the 21. So we have 8 for A, we have 34 for B, but we also want to make note of the bolded section down here. So it's saying set their water temperature, obviously we know being above the thermostat here and above the sink, we know this is what we're doing. But it's also saying that according to the Fibonacci sequence, BA. So we don't actually want to plug the numbers in in the order that we found them because that would give us 83 degrees Celsius. What we want to do is um, follow the book here and put it in um, BA. So it's basically reverse order. So we said before we have 34. So we can go ahead and plug 34 in just using the plus here. Hit the red button to move to the next number. So it'll be 34. And then to get to the other side of the decimal, just hit um, the red button once more, and it'll be 34.8. What that's gonna do is it's gonna trigger a series of like these burner, I don't know, some kind of symbol here. But basically what this represents and what it kind of illuminates is the puzzle on the um, cupboards here. So you can see that what it's kind of doing is showing us in, in terms of like the light size, this is our biggest um, knob here. This would be the second biggest, third biggest, and fourth biggest, or the smallest anyways. Here's our first one here. We can see that its position would be the bottom right corner of this square. So we'll go ahead, click and drag. Our second largest light, or knob I guess, would be the top right corner. So find its panel, and it's now in the top right. We want our third largest in the bottom left corner. So we can just click and drag, bottom left. And then our smallest or fourth largest is just in the top left. So we can go ahead and move that. So you can see now that what it does is raise um, a safe here. If you click and inspect it, you'll see it says the Lucas Safe Comp Company. And if you remember also, when we were looking through this clue initially, it mentioned the Lucas sequence. So. Matching those up, we know now that what we're going to be doing is actually finding the save combination using this page of the clue. And also too, just in this bolded section, it's mentioning that it's often used in save combinations. If we read a little further also, it's saying that the order of the save combination isn't important, but just that we have the correct digits and we can put them in any order. So this one is similar, similar to the Fibonacci sequence, um, so much so that it, it mentions it on this page. but. What we need to do is again, um, add these two um, preceding the X, preceding the Y and preceding the Z to get our um, numbers here. So X is going to be the one plus three. So we know our X is four. Now to get our Y, we need to add our four plus seven, which is gonna give us 11. And to get our Z um, or our Z is gonna be the 11 plus the 18. So we have four as X, 
we have 11 as Y and we'll have 29 as Z. So we can go ahead and you can see just on this dial here, once we drop it, it's going to light the number up. Again, it doesn't matter the order of the numbers, we just have to make sure that we get our numbers right. So 11 we said, we said 4, and we said 29. And you can see that that solves this puzzle here. In it, we have a can of spray paint that we don't need and we have a key. We can take this key over to the top drawer of um, this red section here and there's an extra battery storage. Just use the key on the front of that lock and what it's going to do is uncover our battery. This is another room where there's a lot of clues that add up very quickly so I'm just kind of going to, I'm just going to kind of start a junk pile in the corner here and also what I'm going to do is just expose our end puzzle here. So. After we solve this, it's going to open this other door and we can kind of get into a bit more of what that looks like. For now, this ultimately is what we're trying to solve, but it relies on this U-lock being opened. So once we get there, I'll kind of show you what the whole game plan is for this room. But just to tackle the next kind of logic puzzle in this, what we have over in this bottom corner here is a circular device. And we're going to use this as a clue for a puzzle over in the corner. So just again, towards where that garage door was, there's a light switch on the wall. Just give that a hit and you'll, see, you'll see that it exposes some panels here. So what we're gonna wanna do is take that circular device that we picked up and click the red button on the top and you'll see that it illuminates some panels. And you can see very clearly that there's again, four different shaped um, discs here. We have the largest one being our second disc, second largest being the top, our third largest is on the bottom, and then our fourth largest or the smallest is kind of in the middle here. What we're gonna wanna do is illuminate each um, section here in accordance of its disc. So you can see that our largest disc only has a quarter lit up. You can see that our third or our second largest disc has three quarters lit up. Our third largest has half lit up, and then our smallest one or our fourth largest is completely illuminated. So we'll go ahead and find our largest disc, which is this one here, and you have to make sure to light it up that you follow the direction of the arrows here. So we'll spin it. We said it's only one quarter section, and you can see that we've lit that up now. We'll go over and find our second largest, which happens to be this one on the right side, and we said this one was three quarters lit up. So we'll go ahead and light that up in three quarters. Now our third number here, is our third largest and it's half lit up. So again, we can go ahead and just spin it until it's half lit. And our smallest one here is completely lit up. So spin it for the full four sections. As soon as we do that, this will flip and unlock um, kind of like a plant DNA kind of thing here. So just gonna give this a good hook over here. And what we wanna do is there's three plants in this room, but only one of them is actually gonna give us what we need. So there's a plant up in the corner here, there's a plant over here, and there's a plant just above this desk. So I'll show you what it looks like if we don't plug the right one in. So once you examine it, you use the dial down here to give it a spin, and it'll tell you that there's an invalid specimen. So if you don't have the right plant plugged in, it'll tell you that it's invalid. We're not gonna get a combination from that one. We can plug our next one in here and just again use the dial on the bottom to give it a spin. Another invalid specimen, so we don't need this one here. This is the plant here um, with like the curvier leaves and it's a little shorter. Um, ultimately, that's going to give us our combination. Once you plug that in, you'll see that there's um, kind of a different formation in the roots. You want to use this dial to spin it and it'll reveal a code. You can see that it's 3026. So now that we have that number, we'll turn it around and put it into this U-lock where we noted that there was that plant symbol here. So we said the combination was 3026. So we plug that into the lock. We're gonna throw this rebar here, open the cabinet door. We don't need the paint for anything, but we do wanna pick up that second battery. So that's perfect. Now what we wanna do to uncover the next puzzle is hit this vise and it's gonna act as a switch. You can see that it lifts this desk lid here. We want to zoom in and inspect this computer keypad. Hit the help button. It's not going to burn any of your hints or any of your clues. Um, this is just separate to this and unique to this computer panel. So it's, this cat here is mentioning October. This is directly re um, relative to the calendar behind us. So cycle through the calendar. Click it a few times to find the October um, 
month here. And then you'll see that there's actually a few numbers circled here, and this is our combination for the keypad there. So 5, 14, and 1, or 5, 1, 4, 1. We'll put that into the keypad, hit OK, and then you'll see we're into the computer now. And if you remember this symbol from earlier, that's one of our main puzzle um, indicators here. Right now, this table lamp, you can see that it's lit up as like a regular um, light here using white and we don't see anything, we're not really sure what it's highlighting. What you wanna do after you have access to the computer is hit infra blue. Now it pulls up almost like a UV light. You can see that we have a six illuminated. As you drag it across this slider here, you'll see there's a two, a five, and a five. So you wanna plug that into this combination here with that same light symbol. We set our combination was six, two, five, five. Go ahead and put that into this combo. Give the rebar a huck, open this panel. So we've opened this um, locker now. And you can see that obviously these shapes coincide with our main puzzle here. So it's pretty simple for the most part and then it gets a little kind of messier towards the end. Where I typically start is obviously everything circular except for your squares. And once you kind of get an idea by looking at what the squares um, kind of mean or how, how the puzzle works, um, basically what you're going to want to do is because it is the most unique um, shape and most easily identifiable out of this pattern you're going to want to basically recreate each of these symbols into this panel here so again we'll start with the three squares so you see we have three squares here once you press one of these buttons it turns red so you can see on here we have our lower left or our, sorry our lower right two squares illuminated red. Recreate that on this server board here and that'll eventually once we put in all of the proper lights it'll sync our servers up. So those are our squares. You can see we'll start in this top left corner here now so we have almost a triangular shape um, three light here. That is just this um, pattern here. So you can see we have the top two lights are red. We'll go ahead and switch those on. Um, we have another triangle shape here. So I'm just going to kind of highlight that. And you can see our right bottom right point is the one that's illuminated. So you can see on this board that it's this symbol here. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And now you can see that we have a cluster of four lights here. So again, there's a mini triangle with almost a little offshoot here. And those are the two that we want to highlight. So we want to turn our middle button red and our bottom right corner button red, which is just this symbol here. We can scoot over to this bottom corner because it's essentially the same pattern that we just did. It's just flipped. And what we want now is our bottom left light illuminated. So you can see here's our pattern here. We'll turn that bottom left one on. And now we're into kind of the thick of it here. So we can see that we've got a cluster here, obviously with, you know, we see almost like the shape of like a five of what would look like on a die. We don't have anything that resembles that, but we do have a couple of different mixtures of what it could be on this board. If you can kind of see in my circle here, we can see that there's our four corner pieces. We want to hit that bottom right button to make it red, which is just this one here. On top of that, you can see that we have a um, basically a two stacked on top of each other, which is our point here. And then just this outlier one light under the server, server desynced button. Um, and you can see that's peg, that's this peg here. Obviously it's not red, so we can leave this one alone. The only other light that we wanna turn on is what looks to be the middle of the five. But as we had mentioned before, there isn't an actual five pattern on here. It's made up of a combination of the two and the four. We already have this bottom right peg turned on. We need to turn on um, the bottom of the, the two pattern here, which is just this. So as soon as we do, this will flip and we unlock a sync chip, plug it into the bottom of that puzzle, and you can see just along the floor, it's gonna power up our time machine door here. Just on this, on this puzzle here, you'll see that there's a note saying that the charged batteries, the, the batteries that are green have a charge and then red ones are empty, they don't have a charge. This is saying too, more or less, that we're gonna have to use the time machine twice to get to where Professor Tim E is. Also that he's in 1921. So we have one more battery that we have to get here. We have obviously there's three slots here. We only have two. 
The last battery that we need is if you move this box just off the desk here, you'll see there's a clock. We have an alarm clock that's going to help us with this puzzle, but in the last drawer there's a book or a diary clue. Give that a quick read and you'll see that Mr. Wiggles playtime is Mr. Tim E's favorite part of the day. We want to recreate this time on the clock, so 1.15. So as you can see here, it's set to 9 right now. To make 1.15, we'll drag the small hand to the 1, drag the large hand to the 3, and now we have 1.15. So again, as I mentioned, you want to pick the alarm clock up, and you'll see too that it's very similar. It has a yellow button in the middle of it. We need to turn this one on. Similar to the circular device, we're lighting up quadrants, but we're using the combination um, on the wall here. So basically what this does is it's going to turn everything that these two prongs are attached to yellow, or light it up anyways. If you were to hit it again, it turns each quadrant off. So to recreate this image, we want to basically light up two o'clock and three o'clock. So we do that obviously by dragging it to this section here and we'll hit the middle button. And now what we want to do is we know obviously between four and five is empty, but we want, we want to light up between six and seven and nine and 10. So the trick here is just making sure that we don't have between eight and nine lit up. But the really only way to do that is to light this section up. We'll move this one more. So it'll turn this section here yellow, but it'll turn this section off. And now you can see that we've recreated our alarm clock. Chuck that in the junk pile. We can keep this, I guess, and chuck this in the junk pile. But we've unlocked our final battery. So you wanna turn around and plug them all into the time machine here. So all three slots. And now, as the note mentioned, 1921, this is where he's waiting. We're trying to get to New York in 1921 using this time machine. So plug in 1921 here. We'll hit the red button and it's gonna do something, but at the time, we don't necessarily know what it's doing. I thought initially the first time I played through this that it was the completion of the room, but you can, you can see now that it used all of our charged batteries to spit out three uncharged. So what we need to do ultimately is get a charge now for these three batteries. There's, a, there's another three puzzles that this unlocks and you can tell kind of where those puzzles are. Just they're highlighted in yellow, kind of electrically highlighted anyways. We can start with this first big obvious puzzle here. There's a biocharger. The instructions for this puzzle are just on a tablet in the bottom right drawer. So if we give it a quick read, essentially what we're trying to do with this, and if we use the panel, it'll make a little bit more sense, but it's saying basically that we need to extract this electromagnetic, um, basically we, we need to ele extract the electromagnetic sources from these three plants. So it's telling us what plant needs to have the EM potential extracted and from where. So this first one, obviously it has incredibly complex roots, but we need to extract it from the stem. This one has circular shaped leaves, but um, it needs to be extracted from the roots. And then this one is also circular shaped leaves and we extract it from the leaves. So this one was saying also that there's malformations in the leaves. Um, so we can go ahead and plug this in. So we said, our circular shaped leaves are the ones that we need to extract leaves from. So three will be the one that we extract leaves from. Here's our incredibly complex roots. But again, we know with that we're extracting from the stem. So the second plant is where we extract the stem. And our first one with, again, the malformations in the circular leaves are where we need to extract from the root. So number one is the root. We can charge it up, plug our battery in. And you can see that it's changed from um, red to green and we have a charged battery. Our next puzzle here um, can be done with the um, light prism. What we first need to do is you'll see in this Franklin's kite experiment, one of the doors gives us a kite, or sorry, one of the doors gives us a key, the other one gives us a mirror. To be able to complete this light prism pr um, puzzle, we need to collect that second mirror. We can plug one of our uncharged batteries in to start and then we can use this lever on the left to open up light. What we're going to be doing with this one is plug that second mirror in and we need to make sure that we're using the sunlight now to charge this battery. So we want to turn these mirrors inwards because we're trying to charge these two terminals of the battery using the sunlight. 
Obviously we have our mirrors turned in now. Now we need to manipulate this light prism so that the light is properly reflected to charge the battery. So a couple of spins there, you can see that it's charged this terminal and again changed our battery from red to green. So we can go ahead and collect that now. And then our last puzzle, we're trying to recreate this picture depiction of Benjamin Franklin here, obviously with electricity and the kite and the key. So here's our key. We'll turn around and we'll see that this um, window is now all of a sudden unlocked and open for us. Input the key. We can input our battery. Putting the key in unlocks the kite and you're going to want to just drape it basically on top of the key there and you'll see it kind of hangs out the window. A lightning storm hits it, powers our battery here again from red to green and we can turn around and plug these batteries back into the time machine which is going to give us the chance to use it a second time. You don't have to do anything with 1921 now but you do have to make sure that you hit the red button. And with that, you can see the time machine is charging up again, and we're all set to complete the route. So now with the episode finished, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, your support truly does go a long way. If you've made it this far, we hope that you like what you've seen. Drop a comment, give us a like, and subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games for more guides, tips, and tricks.